The Monsters line up. This will be a Ford Chevy matchup with First Blood going against Fred Schaefer and Barefoot. Barefoot qualified fourth. First Blood, Rob Fuchs aboard, qualified ninth. The points are very, very close this year. If Barefoot can have a good day, given the problems that Gravedigger had earlier, he may overtake Gravedigger in point standings today. On the start, First Blood with a hole shot. Barefoot battles back, going into the turn. First Blood cuts it very, very close. Barefoot has to battle from behind as they come around and head for the cars for the first time. It's First Blood in the lead. Barefoot battling back. They go over the cars. Both bobble just a little bit. And now First Blood's on the outside. Cuts it very, very tight. Look out. Oh, he hit Barefoot. First Blood hit Barefoot. The world champ holds on. Can he make it? Can he keep running? Yes. Barefoot wins it. First Blood hit him, and Barefoot still held on to take the win. An incredible race. Your winner's Barefoot. A tough break for First Blood. Barefoot, how'd you like that little love tap around turn two? Just a little taste of things to come in the semifinals, my friend. Watch your back, because next time, you're mine. First Blood crossed the line and hit barefoot. Jim Davidson's with First Blood's Rob Pukes. Rob, there's a whole lot of bumping going on out there. Yeah, there sure was. Uh, Fred and I kind of hit out there. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't real. Was it a little bit as though you thought he was coming into your lane? I don't know who actually was in whose lane. Uh, my front tire hit his back tire, and you know, there was really no damage done. I don't know who it was, but OK, make the call. Intentional or unintentional? <laughs> I'd have to say unintentional. And I'd have to say, let the show begin as Invader pulls up to the line. His competition will be Alan Piso driving Predator. Invader, I'm a little curious about something. Maybe you can help me out. Exactly what is your mission on Earth, huh? Because as far as I can see, <laughs> it's to experience the sensation of losing. <laughs> mission in this wasteland that you call home, Predator, is to study your primitive civilization's barbaric rituals and to establish my superiority and exploit your compulsive anxieties and delusions of conquest. One more time for my, my good ear. I have traveled a billion light years to kick your butt! X marks the spot here at Louisville Motor Speedway where these two monsters will start. Invader, Ray Perkowski, first in qualifying today. And Predator, Alan Pizzo aboard, qualified sixth. Now, you've heard me talk about this X. As you can see, the X is very, very wide here at Louisville Motor Speedway, about two feet wide, and that's the starting line. Now, with a two-foot wide starting line and a close race, it's very important to line up as close to the end of that X as possible. On the start, Predator with a hole shot. Invader, the fastest is qualifying battling back but now remember he's on the outside he goes a lot further on the outside now things change with predator on the outside invader on the inside invader takes a bad hop he's all over the track predator is going strong invaders battling back predator opens it up now can he hold on to this turn look at invader go look at invader go a very close matchup a very close matchup. Predator wins by three hundredths of a second. Nobody can say these two trucks were not giving it their all. Invader and Predator over the cars. Invader takes a bad hop. Predator takes advantage of it. Then going around the final turn, they almost meet. The tires almost touch. As they come across the finish line, Predator cuts from behind. Three hundredths of a second to win. Predator! You traveled a billion light years for that? Come on, you got a thing or two to learn about primitive civilization, don't you, Invader? Round number one, race number five, the fifth and final race, the matchup between Mark Bendler and Kodiak, qualified second today, and Wayne Smolzanek driving Tropical Thunder, he qualified seventh. 
Kodiak is just running extremely well. As the two line up, we wait for a thumbs up. The officials get out of the way. The green light, and it's showtime. Tropical Thunder with a hole shot. Kodiak has problems. Tropical Thunder on the inside lane, and he opens up a nice lead. Look at this. Kodiak is spinning out. Kodiak goes out of control and slips around. Tropical Thunder, all he's got to do now is hold on. But what's happened to Thunder? What happened to Thunder? The fire under Thunder is gone. And here comes Kodiak. Thunder is dead on the track, and Kodiak takes advantage of that. Kodiak comes from a spin out, and it looks as though he's going to a win. And what happened to Tropical Thunder? Kodiak with a very easy win. And Tropical Thunder limps home. It looks as though he lost the front drive shaft. And earlier driving problems did not keep Kodiak from registering a win. Tropical Thunder had this thing sewn up. The truck was running strong. The driver had everything under control. And then over the first set of cars, something happened. I think he lost the drive shaft. It was all Kodiak from then on out. That's it for round number one here at Louisville. Bachelor number one, could you please look at bachelor number three and describe his physical appearance for me? You know how they say after a while, people start to look like their pets? Well, you'd have to feel sorry for this guy's pet. <laughs> okay, bachelor number three, could you describe bachelor number one for me? Well, you know what they say about, uh... <laughs> Look what the cat dragged in. I finally see what they mean. Anyway, he'd make a great date for Halloween. <laughs> Round one is over, and that means we're set to track the trend and see who will make the turn into round two. The fastest time was clocked in by Carolina Crusher. He managed to cross the finish line two and a half seconds faster than any of our other winning trucks. Remember, all the winners from round one automatically advance on today's show. Equalizer recorded the second fastest time overall, but unfortunately, it was against the Crusher. The good news for Equalizer is that the U.S. Hot Rod Association rules dictate the three fastest losers continue on to round two. So Equalizer, Invader, and First Blood get to move on. Earlier, we saw Kodiak get off to a rough start before pulling out a victory over Tropical Thunder. Kodiak is owned and operated by the husband and wife team of Mark and Carrie Bendler. They hail from Eagle, Wisconsin, and that's where Jim Davidson filed this week's Monster Profile on Kodiak at Home. Eagle's a small town. It's only about 1,200 people out here. Everybody knows everybody wherever you go. and It's nice living in a small town and, and coming back home and you don't have the, the hustle and bustle of a city. When I'm not racing or uh, out on the road, it, it's fun just to come home and do some cooking out with the family and spend time with Ryan. My wife, Carrie. the road for wisconsin-based mark bendler driver of the kodiak it's always a family affair it just makes it that much more uh, enjoyable and it makes it that easier to to work on this stuff if you got somebody backing you and helping you through these tough times in monster truck terms that usually means having to spend big dinero on parts that go crunch i would say an average weekend if you can get by under 500 dollars worth of damage you're doing pretty good uh, Unfortunately for us in the past, it's been pretty expensive weekends. There's been two, three, four thousand dollar weekends, and that definitely hurts the pocketbook. But like a true competitor, Mark always returns to race another day. Meanwhile, back at the shop, Mark and Ryan feverishly work around the clock to get Kodiak ready for the next challenge. My son Ryan, he's two and a half, and uh, it's amazing that he knows the difference between screwdrivers and vice grips and, and the different wrench sizes and everything. Okay, Ryan, let's test you. Give me the 916. Thank you. But Mark, Mark, the wife, the kid, everybody working for you, what does it all mean? When you're sitting in the truck and you're about to leave the line, you got that steering wheel clutched in your hand hard. You jam the throttle down, you can feel the truck just pin you back in the seat, and it feels like you got 1,500 horsepower just running right through the palm of your hand. 
all of a sudden you'll just hit them cars and you'll be sailing through the air and, and the whole thing will be just a feeling of weightlessness. And uh, next thing you know, you're coming down for a landing and you're across the finish line.